Well, hello everybody. And today um, I'd like to introduce Andrea from Journal The Junk. So welcome, Andrea. How are Thank you? Thank you. I'm well. That's good. Andrea is a fellow Aussie and um, I happened upon you on Instagram actually and just love your style. So what would you say your style is, Andrea? Um, vintage, worn. Um, vintage grunge? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And yeah. I like to make it look as though it's been sitting somewhere for, for years on end. <laughs> yeah. Well, you do it very well, let me say. I really, I'm really, i really drawn to, um, to your style. So uh, just to start off with, did you want to tell us a little bit about yourself? It can be as detailed as you like or, you know, you know can tell whatever you're comfortable with, with telling us. Um, I'm Andrea. I'm from the south coast of New South Wales. I'm a mum, a nana, an empty nester. <laughs> um, yeah. And I've always loved op shopping, um, markets, garage sales, like forever. So I think the writing was on the wall as to what I got into. <laughs> um, and I'm a certified death doula. Certified? Death doula. Oh, okay. Wow. Yeah. I, I haven't actually used it, but I've, I've got the certificate to say I can. Okay. So what does that entail? Um, end, end of life, um, supporting people in the end of life. So just Whatever being like... way that looks to them. Okay. To the actual person. Yeah. Yeah. That's amazing, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Well... It's not highly spoken about. People think if you talk about dying, you're going to die. And we are, but, yeah. I, I don't even know why I got into it, but it fascinated me. Oh, that's interesting. So do you think that you'll pick that up at, at any stage? Um, I'd like to think I would, um, but I'm a little preoccupied at the moment. Yeah, <laughs> So um, I know that you worked in disability, so you're obviously a very caring person to be, you know, like a, um, a death doula and then to um, work in disabilities as well. So tell me a little bit about that. How long did you work in disabilities? Um, I, I was in there for, I was actively working for five years and it was very, very rewarding. Yes, it is, isn't it? So yeah. Andrea and I, um, we have never spoken before other than last week when we spoke about, um, meeting up and doing a, a catch up for meeting the makers. So, um, and we have so much in common. So, I used to work in disabilities as well. Um, we love coffee. Uh, <laughs> we we have we love our gin. <laughs> there is not gin in here. I did it just to lighten the mood a little bit. So, Andrea, I so feel you tell us. <laughs> I feel very honoured that Andrea is actually here showing her face because she was very out of her comfort zone and doesn't normally step in front of the camera. So I really appreciate that. <laughs> Thank nice you. Nice to see the face behind the hands. Yeah. yeah. That's all you've seen. You haven't even heard my voice. <laughs> no, no. Well, here we massive. go. <laughs> Maybe this might be a start of something. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Too soon? <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. So I love the um, your background there with the printed trays and your little lovely little cabinets and that. So you can see that you love vintage. Yes. Um, so do where do you find all your little bits and pieces that your printed uh, trays and that? I I scour. I, I I just happen across things. If they're meant to be in my life, I find them. I think. <laughs> yeah, definitely. So do you have many markets like vintage markets and that where you are? Um, we've only been here for twelve months and. Granted, most of the markets down here are maker markets, which is brilliant, but um, I found so many um, vintage shops and antique shops and they're like, so, yeah, yeah I, if it's there, I'll find it. <laughs> so your, your wallet's a little bit um, lighter for me, okay? <laughs> Absolutely. <Yeah. laughs> so where did you come from? Um, we were in Shell Cove, which we're is... 40 minutes up the road oh okay so, so we sure. haven't ventured far but yeah yeah th this is just a little bit more to our our style and liking so yeah oh, nice that's nice yeah. so Andrea who inspired you originally to get into junk journals if anyone or or what inspired you um I saw Eva 
um, Bohemian Crafting, my very first one. Yeah. And it she's just, a- uh, she's so, so, so clever. Um, and that's where it started. And then pff, there are so many out there. I can't believe I've never heard of it before. But, yeah, yeah. Um, went down that rabbit hole of Pinterest and YouTube and then found Instagram, which I'd never been on. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. It's a nice visual um, social media oh, platform, yeah. isn't it? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And I find that there's no drama, <laughs> whereas, yeah. you know, Facebook, I find, I don't know, this is just my personal opinion, Facebook can be so dramatic and yeah. um, I just find the visual aspect of Instagram so much more pleasing and, yeah, it's it's really nice platform, I feel. And supportive. Very supportive. People are yeah. lovely on there. I, I, I've yeah. been really lucky. I, I've met some really nice people. Yeah, oh, that's good. So when did you start making junk journals? Uh, That was probably my first would have been about seven years ago, but I I don't know what I was thinking. (laughs) I've evolved quite a bit. Yeah, oh, well, as we all do. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Um, Seriously, though, probably four, maybe five years ago. Yeah. Yeah. And you haven't looked back? No. I love no. It. I love you don't it. want to, you don't have a feeling to sort of move into another avenue of art or, or craft? You just I, found your this, niche? Yeah, and this incorporates so many different crafts. Mm. You know, whatever you've done, you can kind of throw in there. And I, I think yeah. that's what I like about it. It's exactly. Forgotten skills of being, oh, I used to do that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. And And I just love, you know, like there's, well, junk, junk mail, yeah. you know, cardboard boxes. There's you know, all sorts of found pieces, pieces from the garden, fabrics, paint. You know, there's no yeah. rule, really, is there? Absolutely. Yeah. It's love- a very messy craft. <laughs> yeah. Love getting messy, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, tell us your first memory of ever being creative. Not even necessarily junk journals, but. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't. Um, French knitting. I, I had a really long, 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 long French knitting thing and I, I don't ever remember what I did with it. I was young, young. But, um, yeah, I think that... So what is French knitting? You know, with the cotton spool and the nails? I think you can buy like okay, the yep. plastic ones now. Yep, yep. Yeah, that, that was my first memory. But I've always um, been fascinated in... In pa- with paper, I had a little brown suitcase full of stationery, like, and I don't ever remember making anything with it, but just sorting it out lots and, and colouring in. I loved, and especially if my dad um, sharpened my pencils with a knife and that square nib, I loved that. Yeah, oh, that's <laughs> lovely. It's funny because um, the more we speak, the more we have in common because I think I got my stationery addiction from my dad and um, he was a, a printer mm-hmm. and um, he was the same as me. We could never go into office works and walk out with nothing. We had to get <laughs> something, whether it's a pen or, or a notebook or something, and it's still the same to this day. Unfortunately, yeah. dad's no longer with us, but, you know, I still blame him for my, <laughs> I was going to say hoarding, but my collecting. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, <laughs> yeah. Um, so, how does being creative affect your daily life? Oh, immensely, and especially if I can't. Um, it, it's my um, active meditation, or more or less. It's it's something that I really need. <laughs> it, it's it's good for my mental health and it's good for the people I live with. It's, yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and that seems to be um, a resounding answer is that it's great for our mental health. Oh, um, yeah. And I have to agree with you on that. And um, most people that I've spoken to, um, not just for meeting the makers, but in general, they feel that if they don't, get their creative time in whether that's just sitting and shuffling papers you know going back to your little suitcase of papers you know it's funny you know way back then that's 
been something that you've loved and been able to, you know, I help was you. Little. Yeah. 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 Oh, that's amazing. So all right. Well, we'll get into some of your um, I've just got questions here. Sorry. So I just if I look down. Um, do you have a specific um, process when you're creating journals? Is there something that you factor into every journal or, you know, like do you have a process when you make your journals? I, I do. I, I try to work out a theme. I, I find the hunting, hunter, hunting and gathering stage of the theme gets me in the, in the mode more or less. And, yeah, um, yeah I, I just then I've got a mission on what I can find and, oh, that's appropriate or that's not, whatever. Um, and, and then I'll find a book to go with it. Or sometimes I find a book and I think, oh, that would be great for that. Or, yeah, I, I don't think I'm stringent in, in my methodology, but I think I've got one maybe that I didn't realise until I've been asked this. Yeah. But, yeah, I, uh, then... If the spine on the book is decent, um, that will denote as to what size the um, signatures will be or how many there'll be. Um, and I never sew in my signatures until pretty much the end. And that way I can rearrange, take out, put in, put like with like. Yeah. It's funny how we're all different, isn't it? I just... Um... I think I change my method all the time, but um, I I always have to have a cover. I can't start a journal without a cover. Yeah. I just I just my brain just won't. The cover for me is the start, yeah. and then I don't necessarily gather. I gather as I go. Maybe that's my problem. Maybe I need to gather first and then <laughs> and then do it. And that's why my journals take so long to to do. But they do. They take a long time anyway. We put so much yeah. love and, and attention into them, don't we? Yeah. yeah. My cover I can do at the very beginning or the very last and no rhyme or reason. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. And I did a wrap and I started yeah. with the wrap, but you shouldn't do that because it wasn't quite as probably long as it should have been. Do you, um, are you talking about the wrap on your um, Ladies of the Sea? Ladies yeah, of sea yeah, yeah, yeah. I loved that. I, um, I was going to ask you about that. Um, so you sell your journals, obviously. I do. Do yeah. you just sell them through Instagram or is there? Yeah. Uh, well, there are, I've set up a um, market store. Okay. Yeah. A, a physical market store? Yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. And so where do you, how often is that? Is that every week or? Oh, no. It, it's, <laughs> um, I've gone down to once a month, but it's a Saturday and a Sunday, two different markets, solely because everything's all packed up from the day before, so made it easier. I was doing it like fortnightly. But as a one-man band, it's really hard to restock, or yeah, yeah but, which is a, a double-edged sword because it's great I'm selling things, but I don't just sell journals on there though. But I, but yeah, it, it's it's hard. It's hard to keep that stockpile up. Yeah, very hard. So are there other um, crafts that you do that you sell? When you said you don't just do journals, is there I, other things? I make ephemera, uh, that mm -hmm. type of thing, or I sell things for them to make ephemera or for customers to make ephemera. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> or um, pianola rolls, the, the different papers. Uh, yeah, whatever kind of takes my fancy. Yeah. Of notebooks are very popular. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So they're just a nice little, I, I guess, a, um, a starting point for people rather than paying you know, because I mean, if you're selling your journals, they're not they're not cheap because there's a lot of um, there's a lot of product that goes into them. There's a lot of time, hours and hours and hours of time, and it's not just the hours of time of making, is it? It's the thought process, like you said, the hunting and yeah. gathering, and you know, you've yeah. got to factor all that in because it is time. Even though you love it, you have to, as artists, that's something that we need to think about. Yeah, that that's probably my biggest. Um bugbear is knowing what to price things you know it's, which it's, is then confidence and yeah <laughs> exactly as, as I said I, I love that ladies at sea um journal so mm -hmm. if anybody wanted a journal could they contact you would you do custom or do you prefer just to do 
um, as they come out of your head. I prefer to just create, but absolutely. If people said, could you do this or could you do that? As long as they weren't stringent in the rules. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, exactly. I'd definitely have a go, yeah. Okay. And just um, if they wanted to, just contact you in DM in um, Instagram? Yep. Okay. Yep. All right. So I will put um, Andrea's details in the description box. So Andrea is journal underscore the underscore junk on Instagram and journal underscore the underscore junk Andrea on YouTube. So pop over and share the love and check her out. You won't be disappointed at all. So um, another little thing, and I, I always find this funny because um, I love fussy cutting. I just, I could sit for days on end and fussy cut. And I've got a lot of my followers that just, they just go, oh, you know, I notice that you dislike fussy cutting as, as With well. With passion. I will change <laughs> a whole page so I can avoid it. Oh, really? That much? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> oh, wow. So is it just the um, being so intricate or what is it that you don't like? Maybe patience. Um, I don't know, really. Because I, I, look, my cutting out is using a ruler and, and tearing and, yeah, I, I'm just not neat. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's it. I'd have, like, petalless flowers or wingless <laughs> fairies, I'm sure. And it's the same as everything, isn't it? Some people love doing, you know, fussy cutting. Some people like mixed media you know we can't all be the same can we no. I just I don't know just I just find it fascinating because I just get so much out of fussy cutting I just mm. find that I switch off from everything it's like a de-stressor for me oh, um, I admire that <laughs> <laughs> that's the opposite to me <laughs> so Andrea have you noticed um, any particular themes within our junk journaling community that do you think I would really like to make or are you happy just going along your vintage vintage grunge um, style? Uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm fairly um, stuck, <laughs> for want of better words, in my style. But there, there's plenty of things I, I love and, I, and I've got a jelly plate and I really want to have a good play with that. I've only ever taken it out once. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, but no, I, I just admire, I, I mean, there's probably plenty of that I want to try, but I haven't um, happened on something that oh, I've got to do that. <laughs> yeah, probably um, a time factor for you too if you're doing, you know, making product for your market. It's, um, you know, yeah. you just need to focus on what you need for, you know. Uh, yeah, which, which takes yeah. away a little bit from, you know, that autonomy and wanting to just do that <laughs> yeah exactly exactly do you have any unique features that you do in nearly every journal something that features in your journals all the time um I'm not sure they're unique but I've always got a rusty straight pin somewhere yeah. maybe several <laughs> yeah um and do you rust those yourself yeah I do I do so do you have a um like a, a fail safe recipe for rusting that you can give us because I've tried it and I was hopeless at it <laughs> it's really 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 simple and yes I do it's equal amounts of white vinegar and peroxide and a good sprinkle of salt and I don't measure I just kind of put it all together okay. you only have to soak it for maybe five minutes max and it doesn't look rusty when you take it out but when the air hits it and this is very scientific <laughs> that's when the rust happens oh wow and so, so you just put it out on a um a towel like do you scoop it out and then put it on a towel or yeah my partner mm -hmm. actually made me a little basket thing he, he 3d printed it for me yeah so that's um a lot less mess on my hands because yeah but okay, well, um yeah I put them in this basket take them out I've made the mistake of putting them back in thinking they hadn't um, soaked long enough and they literally fall apart. It, it's oh, really, really, it won't fail. Okay, so don't get it on your hands? Uh, I Yeah, it's a little bit, it's just messy. It's not, it yeah. won't, it'll come off, but it's just messy. Oh, I'm going to have to remember that. <laughs> oh, they, they won't rustle, they won't, <laughs> <laughs> fingers won't fall off. Right? No. <laughs> oh, I you have to try and remember that and um, give that a go. Thanks for that. We have a video. Um, just trying to think it actually might 
show before this goes up, I, I saw your um, making aged tape with the alcohol markers. I know. Because I've been I mean, wanting to do that for a long time, but I just seen with the alcohol inks, I just get it everywhere. Look, I, I mean, I've, I've just had a um, ballpoint pen and I've got pen all over me. I mean, <laughs> I can't touch anything without. <laughs> I'm the same. Yeah, and I actually, um, I used your method and I love it, absolutely love it. I think I want to try and get a couple of different colour pens though. I just grabbed a couple from Officeworks. But, yeah, um, yeah it's a great idea and so much less mess. Burnt butter. Oh, I can't remember. That was the best colour that I that I liked anyway. But I and, had them sitting there doing nothing, mm, you know. Yeah. That's from my card-making days. Well, when I saw that, I thought, oh, I'm sure I've got alcohol ink pens somewhere, but I didn't. I, it was like watercolour pens. So oh. I had to that day go down to Officeworks uh -huh. <laughs> grab a couple. So um, they didn't have a big selection, but um, I'll keep an eye out. And But, yeah, I was really happy with that. So um, keep an eye out for that video and um, also head out to Andrea's Instagram and you can check that out. So you had some good results from that. It was great. Yeah, so I, thanks I was... for that. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we've already determined that your style is vintage, vintage grunge. Um, do you have any tips and tricks for our fellow creatives that might help them within their creative journey? Um, if, if you're starting out, just go for it. There's no mistakes. And if you're not happy with it, just start again or stick something over it. it just like if you want to do it, do it. Don't don't worry about what anyone else is going to think. And, yeah. and you might be surprised at it, like really surprised. Right. I think junk journaling is very forgiving though, isn't it? It's um, oh, Without a doubt. Yeah. Do you find like, I mean, I don't know what you were like, but um, and I did mention this in my last um, video, but it's really made me relax a little bit more with that. You know, everything doesn't have to be perfect and yeah. If you make a mistake or you don't like something, you know, like you said, stick something over top of it yeah. or, you know, tear it out or cut it down. It's a bit like quilting, you know, the ugliest piece of fabric can be beautiful in a quilt if you cut it down small enough. Exactly. <laughs> so it's, it's very similar to paper, you know, you can do the same thing. So add it to a masterboard, you know, that yeah. type of thing. So Throw some yeah. dye, uh, uh, spray some alcohol ink or whatever over it. Yeah. There's exactly. just no rules. No one will know that it wasn't meant to look like it did <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah. if you and show anyone which is more to the point yeah. and if I, I because i'm always in op shops etc i found lots of um old stamps you know the <clears throat> excuse me the wooden wooden mm -hmm. mounted stamps yeah. or the old um uh, office stamps or whatever if yeah. they are hard and they don't work if you um soak them in glycerine so just in a saucer of glycerine sometimes not all the time but sometimes you'll get a stamp to happen oh wow you're just full of knowledge aren't you oh, i don't know but yeah it works <laughs> <That's great laughs> it saves your money because you, you see those like and especially the uh wooden mounted stamps you see them everywhere yeah exactly yeah. Oh, wow, that's great to know. How do you strike a balance between functionality and aesthetics? Um, <laughs> you may not. Uh, I don't. <laughs> no, and that's okay. So you just make your journals because you love it and you just go with the flow? Yep. Yeah, yeah. The, I, I think more um, it, they're, they're definitely not practical in, in, use, in use for a journal per se, but... Um, all my ephemera is blank on the back or I'll stick something on the back. So you could write on it if you wanted to, but I think, I think I'd think i class mine more as a um, coffee table book <laughs> or interest book, not, not so much. Some well, yeah, mine. I mean, you could do them for both, but, I mean, looking through your journals, you still certainly, I mean, if, if I had one of your journals, which I would love to get one, um, one day, there's certainly space to journal, most definitely. Uh, yeah. You just might not um, see it straight away. <laughs> no. It's always full. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I think, um, yeah, I love all those hidden journaling spots, you know. So yeah, yeah. I love a, a journal that you can, you know, is really nice to look at, but then um, 
you know, you've got all these added extras where you can pull a tag out and have a look on the back or you've got a flip or um, in one of your journals you had a, an old, it might have been even the ladies at Sea Journal, you had an old airmail vintage, um, oh, the word's gone, envelope. <laughs> um, it was nice on its own, but I love how you'd, you'd actually torn it open or it may have even been torn already when you found it um, and you've put a little signature in there with some vintage papers and that was so nice because I expect when you pulled it out I just expected an envelope and then you open it up and you've got a little booklet yeah. so that I, I try to put a scrappy book in mm. most of my journals yeah it was beautiful so thank you um how do you engage mainly with your community of creatives is it um well and if you don't do talking too much in your um YouTube video. At all, Sue. <laughs> At all. Well, that's going to change, though, isn't it? Maybe. Um, uh, Instagram is probably where I connect. I mean, I, I would never ignore anybody like that commented on my YouTube, but I think Instagram is where I've connected more yeah. so with people, or it's the people from Instagram that are coming to YouTube. Yeah. But yeah. Um, uh, I, I like, I just like looking at creative things it doesn't matter whether it's to my style I just like the fact that people have put them put themselves out there because that vulnerability is is, it's hard and you Mm. it's kind of you that you're putting out there not not just your work Um, so I like to think that I encourage people as much as I'm encouraged it's yeah yeah. and you do I'm sure you do so um right (laughs) (laughs) um is there a memorable experience or story um, shared by one of your customers or subscribers um, regarding their journal journaling or creative journey? Uh, <laughs> I nearly scrubbed this, and I thought, <laughs> you know what? This is my memory. It's not a it's not a far gone memory, but this is my this will be memorable. I, I, I've spent a big fortnight panicking, <laughs> and I and I was just so flattered that you actually asked me. I, I still blow out that people like my work sometimes. I still think, oh, my goodness. But, yeah, so so this is going to be my good memory. This is, And I've got plenty of things I could probably draw on, but I think this this has really got me out, my, out of my comfort zone. Oh, good. I and love you it. saying that you were nervous about it is oh. what, yeah, it's what prompted me. It's what, like, well, if you can do it, so can I. Let's do it together. <laughs> yes, exactly. And good on you for stepping out of your comfort zone. I don't feel as um, physically ill <laughs> as the first one that I did, let me tell you. But um, I still, even when I just do a video on for content on my channel, I still, I have to psych myself up before I turn the camera on. And I always, I still feel nervous. And I guess if we lose that, we're not being real if we get a little bit cocky and just think, you know, yeah. I, yeah. And I think people tend to like that because it makes us more human. It humanises, yeah. doesn't I, it? I agree. I, I, mm. I agree. Yeah. Well, we are grateful that you're here today. So oh, grateful that you had me. <laughs> <laughs> um, so is there anywhere, now you, and I probably know the answer to this question, but uh, where do you find your inspiration for your creations um, and how do you stay motivated? Uh, there's so many different platforms that you can just, you know, while away your hours on um, Instagram, YouTube, Pinterest. Uh, I can spend hours just looking through and then you'll think, oh, I can do that. Oh, I'm going to have a go at that. Um, my motivation comes from a necessity, <laughs> Off late, though, it's been more um, the markets that I've been really focused on. So that I'm hoping to settle down a little. Um, But, yeah, motivation comes from everywhere and anywhere for me. I I can pick up a picture and think, oh, that would be great, and then I'd work around that one picture for a whole journal. But, yeah, yeah, I I get inspired by so many, so many things, like Mm. so many things. And it's amazing. We probably don't even realise that we have certain things that inspire us, you know, just going out during the day, you might see a design or a, a pattern on some tiles or, yeah. you know, 
something or a colour combination or something like that and consciously we might not realise until, you know, we get back home and then we go, oh, I saw that, you know, yeah. or whatever and, and then absolutely. run. Absolutely. So it's everywhere, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. So have you, and I would imagine that you have being a, a creative, but have you ever lost your inspiration? And um, if so, what do you do to try and get that back? Yeah, I have, and funks are horrible. I, um, and and several, and I think half of it is that you've got so many things. Well, for me, I've got so many things going through my head that I can't pinpoint which one I want to do a lot of the time. But um, that's when I'll dye my papers or uh, rust my hardware <laughs> or um, clean up. And I'm looking because that half's really, really <laughs> um, Yeah, and, and find, like, things that you've bought and forgotten or half made or, you know, think, oh, maybe I could tweak that, yeah. Fortunately, that's never lasted too long. <laughs> that's good, isn't it? Yeah. So when you create, um, do you create at, create at the desk that you're at now? No, this is where I film my YouTube or this is my messy desk if I'm going to be painting or, or okay. stuff like that. So when you... when my your messy desk is over there. <laughs> behind you or to no, the... No, 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 to, to my right and it's... I... Yeah. <laughs> and so do you have your own room? Yes, yes, yeah, yes, nice. yes. Okay. So when you create, do you like to have... Um, like a lot of things that you <laughs> use all the time close by. Yep. Yeah. And it's yeah. physically impossible to work if you've got everything out, but I, yeah. I try really hard. And then I go on to the next project and that project is in a pile. And yeah. Yeah. Or I, to the next desk. You've obviously got several desks, a bit I like have. me. Yeah. I have. <laughs> excuse me. There's never, never a, um, a blank space in my room. <laughs> There's me always. Neither. Me neither. <laughs> I've worked out that I'm a, um, what did I call it? Uh, a stacker and a shover. <laughs> if there's a drawer I can shove something in, it's easy. If there's something I can stack on top of, there is, you know. Yeah, I'm the same. I, and yeah. I find when I tidy up, I can't find things anyway. Me either. So yeah, there we that's go. That's so frustrating. <laughs> so that's the moral here is don't tidy up. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> Just make that pile higher. Higher, exactly. <laughs> um, do you have a favourite technique or tool that you like to use? Um, I like um, to make some original ephemera, like a copy of an original ephemera as, as close as I can to the original. That, that's for when I can't part with things. If I've only got like one or two of them, I think. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, so that that's my challenge, but I love doing it. I, I really oh, okay. do. And tools, um, my ink, I, I'd be lost without my ink. My crocodile, I like my hole punch because that goes through so many layers. Um, my little guillotine cutter and my glass mat. <laughs> we definitely have our favourites, don't we? It yeah, certainly yeah. makes our life easier. Um, so how, is there anything that you've bought, you've thought, I have to have that, and then you've just maybe used it once and it's just still sitting there not used? Plenty of things. Um, I don't use, well, I, I shouldn't say that because I have used them, but now I've gone on to this. Like my, for my card making, I use my scoring board all the time. Now I can't even remember the last time I had it out. Um, I, I'd say my envelope punch board, but I've I've actually used that off late. Like, yeah, yeah. Uh, but there's plenty of stuff. When I when I when I first started out, I'd walk into an op shop and everything looked appropriate, and I'd buy it and I'd get it home. And I've probably got it sitting here, like to this day. I I wish I had found my niche straight away <laughs> and yeah. have saved a hell of a lot of money yeah I, old books is my go-to I and I've got two shelves of them I use them in everything and that's where I get a lot of my photos from as well so yeah I, I probably could work with old books and paper and ink <laughs> if I had to yeah so is there anything in particular that you look for in an old book uh, different font, 
I'm, I'm a bit fussier now. Before I used to just think, yeah, that's old. It has to come home with me. But um, old photos, like the era of photos that I like, um, different fonts, different languages, um, and a nice cover is a bonus. Yeah. <laughs> we love a good cover. Yeah. yeah. They don't have to be intact, though, I, because you can make your own spine, mm, which definitely. I do. Yeah. If you've got a, a damaged spine on one of your books, do you utilise that in any of your journals? Yeah, I use them as belly bands or part of a collage. I never I never throw my spines. I never throw anything away if I'm honest. I, I try to I try to still use them, yeah. And the inside bit, I love that. Um, yeah. With the che old cheesecloth. Yeah, and, yeah, 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 yeah. If you can get it off. Sometimes it's a bit tricky to get off. <laughs> yeah. Um, I know years well when I first started if I found an old book and I'm kicking myself now because like if the spine was damaged or really, I would just throw it out and I'm just think, uh, you know, uh, all that. I mean, that was when I just, just started though and just didn't really, you know, cause yeah. I was, I was still like everything had to be clean and fresh and, you know, that <laughs> but now I'm like, Oh no. <laughs> yeah. You weren't anyway, meant to have that. <laughs> we, live and learn. we live and learn. <laughs> Um, <laughs> so uh, touching on um, your um, op shopping or thrifting for um, the international followers, um, is there anything that you particularly, other than books, an old book, is there anything that you particularly look for? Buttons. I, I, I love getting little bags of or tins of things that you've got no idea what's in there and you might just spy one or two things and you think, nah. I, I love looking through all those. Uh, laces, I, I've, I've got way more than what I could ever use in a mm -hmm. lifetime. Um, paper, I've found some really old typewriter paper. That's what it's called. Nice. It's, it, it's skinnier than an A4, but it's longer than an A4. Mm -hmm. um, and it's almost see-through. It, it's like a tracing paper, but it's got a bit of, yeah, I, you can tell I was proud of that one. But anything, anything of, of old records, um, I'm always looking, and it's not the records I want, it's the sleeves, mm -hmm. music paper, just anything of interest. Have you ever squealed out like actually gone <gasps> like this when you've found something I've done that a couple of times and embarrassed myself but yeah, um, yeah. my very first Edith Holden book oh yeah <laughs> and you know I don't even use them in my I mean I, I had nine I put them on my market they're gone yeah <laughs> I, they're I um they're a rare commodity now aren't they yeah they, they really are but um, unless, unless you want to pay an absolute fortune of course yeah <laughs> No, <laughs> and old, um, you know, the stamps, the um, what an office, an old office would. Be. Yeah, I found a bundle of those ones, and that was okay. fairly exciting. <laughs> I bet. Yeah. yeah, I've actually stayed away from the um, op shops a little bit lately because I found um, I had been very selective about what I was buying, and then I don't know. I went through a stage where I just was, oh yeah, that'll be good. That'll be you know, and I was just grabbing everything and I just yeah. had so much and I just thought this is ridiculous. It's getting out yeah, of no, it's a bit. I'm a bit the same. I, and, right. and old um, uh, linen, doilies, tablecloths. Yeah. yeah. They're always. <laughs> yeah, love doilies, love doilies. So um, just another thing that I noticed um, on your Instagram as well, that you've done some eco dyeing with great success. So yeah. that's another failure that I've done uh, <laughs> and had I, no success. So. I, I watched so many videos like and ended up confusing myself and I just thought, oh, bugger it, let's go. And, and it worked. I, I was very proud of that. But I've since gotten a... Um, a camp oven or stovetop to do out the back because my house stunk of vinegar uh, did it. for yeah. a long time. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. But, yeah, yeah I, and, and I'm not even sure, I'm not a very good gardener, so I, can't, I couldn't even really tell you what plants I used. Yeah. But um, Susie Quaife, she mm -hmm. was giving me little tips and she's like, make sure you wrap it up really, really tight. I was wrapped. I, I was really wrapped. Yeah, it looked amazing. So do you do that often, eco-dying? 
I, I've done it twice. Right? <laughs> yeah. Well, that's um, one more time than me. I did it once. <laughs> I just would have, be happy to buy other people's eco because it's I, just yeah. yeah. I think not overthinking things, which is I'm terrible for. It's like no, I've got to get every last little bit of you know ruling that goes with whatever. And, and yeah, I think that stops me from doing a lot of things. So it was just like ah, have a go. <laughs> And I like that, have a go, because I think um, the busier we are, and, uh, and I mean, I'm just speaking for myself, but I'm sure that you um, probably are similar as well. And a lot of us that create are that we, you know, we have things that we're working on and we just want to do it, but we also want to try something. But it's just like, well, I really should be finishing this journal that I'm doing now. Um, and then we don't, we sort of do it half-heartedly we try well I think that's probably what my issue was with yeah the, yeah yeah I get you I want it to work out now so instead of yeah. taking the time and giving it a go and then going oh well that didn't work I'll try this I've just put my hands in the air and went I'm not doing it again can't do it again. yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah and you're right I, I think I'm, I'm a bit the same yeah yeah so it's just have a go yeah, Spend if it time. works the first time, you can do it. <laughs> yeah, experiment, it right? whatever you do, <laughs> so yeah. you can go back to it and remember. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, Andrea, have you faced any challenges with regards to your creative journey? Uh, selling a house, <sighs> keeping my place tidy and packing away things that I need. Um, this was uh, 12... Uh, 14 months ago or so um so first I had to pack up and make it look decent then mm. when I was creating it was like oh don't make a mess and putting everything away so it was only half a half heart, half-hearted efforts um we sold the place so that was packing up this place hadn't um been it was through COVID so this place hadn't been finished so we moved into um a small unit I was set up in the lounge room and just prayed I wouldn't get visitors. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then we had to, like, move down here and then I had the whole house to set up. So I felt like there was a huge gap in what I wanted to do um, in, in comparison to what time I had to do it. Yeah, but that, that was a huge challenge. And I, and I packed all things that I needed, Oop, of course. And I replaced a few. <laughs> oh, done that plenty of times. Can't find something to go and buy it. And then two weeks later, you find you it. Find it. Yeah. But, um, that would have been a big challenge, you know, moving and then not having that because you said earlier that um, you find, um, like most of us do, it's really good for your mental health to be able to create yeah. and doing all that, you know, all that packing and moving. And um, it's sort of, I mean, that's stressful in itself. Yeah. And then you don't have your stress reliever to be able to do. Absolutely. So, Absolutely. Um, well, we're glad you got through it. And that <laughs> end, so that's good. You look like you've got a nice set up there. So really good. Uh, only that half. <laughs> that's all right. We don't have to know about the other half. <laughs> I'm honest. It's yeah. Nice. <laughs> well, I mean, truly, if we're all honest, we, you know, when we do our videos, it's only whatever you can see here that's neat because <laughs> yeah. everything else is shot. <laughs> so, um, what if, do you have any future goals for your creating or your little business? Um, uh, speaking on YouTube was one of them. Here I am. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. You can tick that off your list. Yeah. Um, I, I, I'd love to be a little more tech savvy as well, like not make it such a big chore. Um, and I'd like, I think I'm, I, I think one I'm ticking, well, two I'm ticking off is getting a stockpile together for the, for the market. So I'm not coming home and thinking, oh, I've got three weeks to do this or that because it's taken away from the enjoyment I'm getting from doing it. Um, yeah, so working out a, a little bit better of a system so that I can continue because, because I enjoy it. I enjoy yeah. meeting the people and, yeah, sharing that, my passion. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I think that's it, isn't it? It's um, we're very um, we're very much alike. You know, like I, I mean, I'm happy to stay home and not people at all. But then I love people, and I love learning more about people and interacting with them, and and 
sharing what knowledge we have and that sort of thing. So it's sort of a double-edged sword really, isn't it? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. The, the setting up in the early mornings are a little bit nippy. Uh, but yeah. that will improve. <laughs> so are you a morning person or a night owl? No, I'm a morning person. Oh, yeah. Like, well, that's one thing we don't have in common. <laughs> <laughs> no, come 9, 9.30, I'm nodding off. But if I get up at 4, 4.35, yeah wow yeah no I'm well I don't sleep that well but I'm there's no way I'm getting up unless I have to get up I mean if I had a market or something I'd probably get up but I I wouldn't do it as often as you do so (laughs) um how long have you been going and doing markets um I've probably done now it's not long um maybe five months oh okay Yeah. yeah I was very nervous on my first one I've yeah. been rained on, and I. But I've discovered that the wind is way worse when you're selling oh. paper things. Yeah. And customers and other store members running around <laughs> grabbing my things. So we got walls for the gazebo thingy now. That yeah that helps. But yeah, I, I'm enjoying it. Oh, good. I it's love you. Love that you enjoy it, and it's. I mean, it's a big um, commitment to do a market. I have done markets years ago. And it's a really big commitment to sort of have yeah. everything, you know, it's like the behind the scenes stuff, not just the making, but the prepping and making sure you've got everything and then the setting up. And then yeah. I used to packing up, I'd go, okay, well, I'm going to pack everything neatly so I know where it is. And it's just like shoved in. I just want yeah. to get home and have a let's, coffee. Let's go. go. Yep. <laughs> so you're the same? My partner helps me now too. Uh, he doesn't help me set up. He's not good at that. But, yeah, he helps me. He, he does woodwork. So... I've given him a little table. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so I guess it's a joint venture now. <laughs> oh, no. What sort of things does he make? He actually just um, made a pinball machine. A pinball machine? Yeah, we have oh, to what? show kids how they how they work. <laughs> the, the bigger kids have a go, but, yeah, but um, boot jacks and trivets, so, yeah. Oh, so you're both very creative. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Nice to have somebody, I guess, that understands that creativity and, um, you know, like-minded, you know, it'd be different if you had a partner that just had no interest whatsoever. So um, do you find that that's helpful, having that support from him? (laughs) I find it's... I find it's helpful that he's got his own thing. He's he's retired now. So he does his... Yeah, I've got my space, he's got his... (laughs) Sounds great. <laughs> um, Sorry, if, you could offer, yeah, if you could offer one piece of advice um, to your fellow creatives, what would that be? Um, go for it. Don't worry about what anyone else thinks. Or I mean, so many people won't even know what a junk journal is, especially. Um, just go for it. If you enjoy doing it, do it. Doesn't doesn't matter what it is. Just go for it yeah yeah exactly and just enjoy doing it yeah yeah the the process yeah. is 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 fun so yeah yeah <laughs> exactly that's right okay so we're nearly at the end it's been great um really loved catching up with you and and actually meeting you so hopefully yeah, going right. forward we might see a little bit more or hear a little bit more of your voice on you. <laughs> you might <laughs> So, but before we leave, is there anything else that you wanted to um, add, um, let anybody know about yourself? Or as I said, I'll put all your details to your social media accounts in the description. Um, anything else you wanted to add that we haven't touched on? Not, not that I can think of. No? Okay. No. So we'll finish up then. And But I'd just like to finish with, um, do you have a favourite quote or affirmation? Your thoughts are your reality or what, whatever you put out to the universe is what you'll get back. So yeah, that's yeah, nice. That's, that's what I try to live by. Yeah, I it's like that. It's easy to say I'm so reality. broke but you'll stay broke. So, exactly. You know, exactly. You'll have an abundance, you'll get it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's beautiful. Excellent. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Andrea. I'm so glad that you put yourself out there. Um, you. It's a big step. I know, I know where you're coming from, um, but I really want 
our beautiful community to get to know our creatives a little bit more. So it just sort of gives a little bit of an insight into um, what you do and, and, and who you are. So I really appreciate that. Well, Thank you so much for joining us. I, I appreciate being asked and, and making me that vulnerable person that I was feeling. No. <laughs> well, you've done really well. So no, thank you so that. Thank you. Well, thank, thank you so you. much for joining Andrea and I today. Um, I'm so grateful for Andrea putting herself out of her comfort zone and coming on and giving us a little bit more insight into how she ticks. So next week on Thursday, we have another fellow creative that will be joining us on my blog. So I'll put the details down below for the blog. Um, she is an amazing, she does junk journals, but she is an amazing sewist or stitcher. So um, keep an eye out for that. Um, you won't be disappointed. Thanks, guys. Take care. And until next time, I hope you get a little bit of creative time in. Bye.